first of all, um, it's not actually the exhibition what we saw these days in Williams. It's rather competition. So, if I have to talk about this particular edition of uh, Triennial, I wouldn't use the word exhibition because that presumes some kind of uh, whole or coherent system of uh, artwork. But what I saw instead was uh, just isolated artworks hanging on the wall with no common context behind it. So, and this is exactly how I treated them. So I just isolated them to approach them personally and trying to read the text without the context behind it. So I somehow have a feeling that uh, all the other jury members did the same. Because once uh, we gather around the table to discuss the things, consensus was really hard to find. So it looked like hopeless effort. Like everybody was telling his or her own story. Everybody has a right to do that, but at the end, we went down to the mathematics and voting, which is kind of a common denominator of democratic voting, which is not exactly what experts do. Experts rather exchange opinions and discuss and uh, propose the argument, but um, it didn't work out this time like a way for finding a consensus. So, I would say at the end, politically, it ended very fine. All the three Baltic states got something. So, in political terms, it's very much correct. But uh, uh, in the art world, inside of the art world, I would say what we are left with is a multitude of opinions. Okay, one of those opinions won the first prize. But nobody never said that that is the best one. So um, I would rather stick on the opinion that there is no common understanding of painting or contemporaneous of painting, but rather the multitude of opinion. And it's evident as well as on the exhibition as on the jury gathering. They are the same thing in a way. If there was this algorithmical tree to evaluate uh, paintings, then there would be no need for jury. You just take this algorithm to evaluate the painting and that's it. So I think uh, for that event also, what was needed was uh, some kind of personal contribution from the jury. So to give a personal touch to this event and artistic touch, Somebody has to be subjective about his opinions and to say, maybe I'm stupid, but I like it. And this is where the real conversation starts. It's not where the algorithms lie, but it's rather when someone comes honest and says, listen, I don't like it, although I don't can tell why, but it's just my instinct, um, just my taste, and that's my personality and my personal background. I rather like this instead. And then everybody feels home. Like, uh, okay, now we are honest, now we are in the common ground. But later on, nobody can actually analyze why it came out that way. So, okay, we have a winner, we have a second best and third best, but nobody actually, actually has a clear explanation why it happened that way. Mm -hmm. Egle Karpachavute, who actually won the Karpavichute, who actually won the public uh, yeah. audience prize, she showed a certain awareness of the context of the art of nowadays. 
she made a very clear reference to young British art of 90s, personally to Damien Hirst, who came out uh, with the same wave of British, young British art, saying that everything can be appropriated, everything can be exploited in the history of art. But Edwe made a statement of the second wave by saying that this very young British art can be appropriated as well as all the rest of the art history, making uh, Damien Hirst her own property, so to speak, by saying that everybody is even. It's not that one is taken and uh, another one is victim of hostile taken over. The next generation is there and uh, exploiting the history the same way, same ruthless way as the young British army. So for me it's a very clear signal of education, I would say, and a proper uh, modern philosophy of contemporary art. She knows the context, she knows how to use it, and she also has this um, manual skill to express it. I like it, so I wrote it for her. So.